Genocides exist all throughout the 20th century, on a variety of scales. Although we're impactful relative to each society and its victims, anytime the word is mentioned, the immediate iteration that comes into everyone's mind is the Holocaust during World War II. When analyzing the numbers of victims of this genocide, one discovers that it was not the highest of the 20th century in terms of number of casualties. In actuality, it ranks third behind the man-made Great Chinese Famine from 1959 to 1961 and the Congolese Genocide of 1886 to 1908 at the hands of Leopold II of Belgium. Did you even know about these two events in history? How come we don't know of them? What makes the Holocaust so unique or appear to us as more traumatic? That it dominates our minds when we discuss the mass killings of a certain people. Maybe it's the enormous variety of books or expensively produced movies and shows that remind us. Or it could also be the number of museums, monuments, or memorials scattered across 48 countries that refresh our memories every time the Holocaust fades away into the past. 254 sites globally, and that's excluding the United States. If we tack on the US sites to the global aggregate, the sum astoundingly jumps to 345. You'd think Israel would be at the top of this list of sites recognizing the Holocaust, but it's not. It's tied for fifth on the list behind the United States, Germany, Ukraine, Poland, and equal to France. One would assume that the nation most impacted by this event in terms of how the Holocaust created an aura of sympathy, thereby fast-tracking Israel's establishment, would be the nation with the most sites in remembrance of the Holocaust. How the suffering of the Holocaust was the suffering of its own people and eventual citizens. But no, Israel and its Zionist mission don't need to have the most museums, monuments, or memorials in reminding the world of the Holocaust and its messages. Israel wants to remind us differently. They remind us by creating generations of Zionists, instilling them with an irrational fear that doesn't exist. Generations that will carry the trauma of the Holocaust in perpetuity. No one knows the pain, suffering, and trauma other than those who experienced the Holocaust firsthand, not their children, and definitely not those who claim to know all there is to know about this moment in human suffering. Empathy can only take a person so far. It's just not the same. This aging population of survivors are mostly within the final years of life, and upon their passing, the tangible and experienced terrors of the Holocaust will disappear forever. Their next of kin will claim this memory, but as I said earlier, it just isn't the same. And this feeling that isn't the same is at most the sentiment felt by the remaining 50 million plus Jews around the world. But if you ask Zionists, such a statement can't be true. For Zionists, the suffering and victimhood of the Jews is and will always be eternal. And at the very peak of this Jewish suffering is the Holocaust. It shall never be forgotten. Generation after generation of Israelis must always remember and inherit this trauma. The Holocaust was an awful moment in human history. A moment when one powerful people imposed their will and strength over a weaker group of people. When racism and bigotry led to eventual genocide on a catastrophic scale. Approximately 6 million Jews were dispossessed of their rights and belongings shipped off to labor, concentration, and extermination camps. Millions suffered from the ideologies of a handful of Third Reich leaders and by the actions of the Nazi population. Millions of lives were quenched with the silences of the Western global powers who knew what was taking place yet chose to look the other way. Three and a half million Jews survived the Holocaust, a collective memory filled with fear, disgust, rage, anger, loss, and shame a collective memory that didn't want to recall the violence, inhumanity, and injustice of it all. Holocaust survivors in Israel, either as a majority, didn't want to speak of the experience, cocooned in their psychological refuge, or if they spoke, no one wanted to listen. As with the autobiographical works of Primo Levi with his If This Is a Man in 1947 and Elie Wiesel's Le Nuit in 1955, that told in detail about the reality of life in the camps during the Holocaust. There were no ears open to listen to the stories and details 
of the Holocaust, everyone appeared to want to forget, including the significant majority of the survivors and including the rest of the Western world who condoned the genocide in one way or another. In 1961, everything changed. Television was now the means for reaching the world. And with television came the Holocaust, live from Israel to each and every living room in the Western world. The highly publicized Adolf Eichmann trial, an SS lieutenant colonel who participated in the final solution to the Jews, was broadcast for all to see and hear. Everyone listened to the first-hand fine details of the behavior and atrocities of the Nazis during the Holocaust, and to the agony of the survivor testimonies who lived through such an ordeal. This event that Jewish survivors, who were labeled as weak or passive by Israeli society, had chosen either to remember in solitude or to forget altogether for over 15 years, was now in the open. Vav, ha-ne-esham b'yachat im acherim, hikshim ha-shmadat ha-yehudim b'en ha-sha'ar al yedei ha-rigatam b'machanot rikuz, sh-mataratam ha-yta retzach ha-monim ve-ele ha-chashuvim b'nehem. Auschwitz. And in its divulgence, Zionism recognized the power associated with such a story. The power to use this event to its advantage in the immediate and in the eternal future. And at this moment in history is when the Holocaust as project was born. Reforms across all parts of Israeli life came into action. New organizations were formed to bring the Holocaust to the forefront of being an Israeli to take a central role in the public consciousness. Educational curricula that had previously prioritized the conquests of Napoleon over that of the Holocaust saw sweeping changes, thereby introducing the Holocaust and its details early into the formative years of all Israeli students. The status of the Holocaust was institutionalized, with the virtually irrelevant Yad Vashem Institute, Israel's official remembrance to the Holocaust, was now granted significant new funding importance and status. Scholarly work and research on the Holocaust skyrocketed. Everything changed. The Holocaust was now an intrinsic part of the Israeli identity, but also a credit line of victimhood to be cashed out by the Zionist mission. Beyond the Holocaust survivors, all of Israeli society had some relationship with the Holocaust, be it through their relations or through their collective memory. But the key component that was being transformed by the Zionist mission was to tell its version of the takeaways from the Holocaust. And that is the moment when the Holocaust, the lesson, was born. So what was the lesson that the Zionists wanted to push? Was it that the Holocaust was a warning to the world on the impacts of fascism and racism? That one cannot ignore a genocide for many years and show remorse only years thereafter? That this type of catastrophe will never happen again? Or was it that it will never happen to us again? And it's this word us that the Zionists want to focus on. That the Jews of Israel must do anything and everything at their disposal to make sure that another Holocaust doesn't happen again. Regardless of how far-fetched such a prediction might be. In the words of Israel's Prime Minister, Golda Meir, after the Holocaust, Jews have the right to do anything they want. It became a license for conduct with any means necessary. That was Mir's takeaway from the Holocaust. Yuri Avneri, the late Israeli journalist and politician, summed it up best when responding to the Sabra and Shatila camp massacre in Beirut in 1982 by the IDF. I will tell you something about the Holocaust. It would be nice to believe that people who have undergone suffering have been purified by the suffering. But it's the opposite. It makes them worse. It corrupts. There is something in suffering that creates a kind of egoism. You get a moral power of attorney, a permit to do anything you want. This is a moral immunity which is very clearly felt in Israel. And that is how the Zionist project projects to the world the Holocaust, in order to justify all of Israel's violent actions in the future, a carte blanche. This lesson, though, is not solely reserved for the world. It is targeting the youth of the Israeli population to program their behavioral social software in alignment with the Zionist mission. In Israel, this indoctrination of this lesson to students and tourists 
takes place at the Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. This center is also a mandatory rite of passage for all birthright Israelis international visitors. The Yad Vashem each year sends thousands of Israeli teenage students to sites of the concentration camps, such as Auschwitz. And one somber statement by Israeli activist Gideon Levy I've read really hits home about the impact of these types of Zionist psychological conditionings. I have yet to hear a single teenager come back from Auschwitz and say that we mustn't abuse others the way we were abused. There has yet to be a school whose pupils came back from Birkenau straight to the Gaza border, saw the barbed wire fence and said, never again. The message is always the opposite. Gaza is permitted because of Auschwitz. And then came the arrival of Menachem Begin with his Likud party in the late 1970s and repositioned the Holocaust as a crying call, the boy who cried wolf. A need to project that the Holocaust, in an even worse scenario, was around the corner. It was now a necessary reminder for all around the world that another Jewish genocide cannot happen. And so that it will not happen, the enemies of Israel will have to carry the signs, symbols, and names of those who had committed the Holocaust. For seven long protracted years, we suffered at the hands of a neo-Nazi organization, which put blasphemously into its name the letter L, which purposely stands for liberation, as the German Nazis did with the word socialism. The Third Reich, the Nazis, Himmler, Goebbels, and Hitler, they were all still out there, still threatening the survivability of the people of Judah. The camps and the genocide of the past don't even compare. The next time will be much, much worse. The current and future threats were real and with this new narrative came the Holocaust as analogy. To make everyone cringe and relive the guilt of the Second World War. To trigger fear and disgust about the new enemy and to dehumanize them. To visualize the likes of the PLO, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran and others as the true perpetrators of the distant Holocaust, as well as the one that was about to be realized, should Israel not preemptively defend itself, regardless of if its defense was done with inhumanity or injustice. The next step is to go on the offensive and to eradicate uh, this uh, Nazi-type Hamas. Um, we, I, I, in my life, I've never used the term Nazi for anything but the original Nazis. This is the first time I'm using it because uh, it's the exact same ideology, ideology of uh, annihilating uh, Jews just because they're Jews. Zionist claims that there exists within today's world a potential Jewish genocide is absurd. There's a major difference between the state of the Jewish people today and that of the Jews in the early to mid 20th century. Israel alone is a substantial difference a mighty nuclear-powered nation that has the full and unadulterated support of the West, no matter the means or consequences to their defense. Israel, unlike the Jews during World War II, can defend itself. And the Holocaust is something that should be defended. Defended by the Jewish nation from the Zionist mission. The Holocaust is something to remember. To simply remember it as a failure by humanity towards other humans. But in the Holocaust also, there are some things to forget. To forget the notion of the Holocaust as a tool for politics. To forget about the Holocaust as a project or an analogy. And to redefine the idea of the Holocaust as lesson. A lesson that tells us that no genocide of any people by any other people is right. That it shouldn't be possible in our day and age and that no matter how hard violence has tried to rectify things, violence will always fail.